Okay, so I know I said at the end of my last video that I wasn't going to do another build for a little bit. Um, I was actually given a request slash suggestion for a build by YouTube user Dexarray, who I will put a screenshot. I'll put a screenshot of their comment on the screen, and I thought, ah, you know what? It's my first request. I'll have a quick look into it, building it, and then the more I started building it, the more fun it looked the more crazy it got, and um, I just, I couldn't help myself, I made the build straight away, and here I am recording it uh, not long after initially conceiving the build, but I've played around with it a bit, and I think it's really, really cool. So what they specifically asked for was a psychic warrior type build, which allows for the use of psychic type spells in addition to martial proficiency, so sort of a spell sword gish character that focuses on uh, psychic aspects, so I wasn't quite sure if they meant that they wanted to do psychic damage, be able to use psionic abilities, such as being able to fly, um, you know, featherfall, extended jumps, all that sort of thing, or they wanted like to be able to do like psychic blasts, so things like force damage or thunder damage. So I did all of it uh, in a single build, and I think what we've got here is awesome. Uh, to start off, you're going to want to pick a Gifyanki as your race. This seems fairly obvious, but the amount of things you get from being a Gifyanki outside of just the racial bonuses are really, really strong, and it's going to factor into our equipment quite heavily. So, very, very important that you pick Gifyanki. As far as your background or whatever, take whatever you like. It doesn't really matter, but in this case, we definitely want to go with a Gifyanki race. So, let's get into the actual build. Uh, as far as your first level, you're going to want to take Fighter. And this is going to get us a few things. It's going to get us armor, weapon, well, armor and weapon proficiencies that we want. Uh, it's also going to give us a fighting style, which means we're going to be able to take great weapon fighting. This is going to be really, really good for keeping our damage high. And for the record, I said in the Virgil build that I did last time that I wasn't sure if it worked, if um, great weapon fighting works with um, versatile weapons. It does, so... Feel free to take that in that build if you want to, but we're definitely taking it here since we're going to be using a greatsword. Primarily. Uh, here is the stat spread. We've got a 10 in strength. I promise it'll make sense. A 13 in dexterity. This would have been fine at 12, but I had an extra point to spare. Nowhere else to put it. Constitution at 10. You know why. And I really tried to avoid it this time, but I just couldn't. Uh, intelligence at 17, our primary stat, this is going to be super, super important, and we're going to want this as high as we can, as early as we can. Wisdom at 8, we don't need it. And Charisma at 16, with our plus 1 going there, because surprisingly, this stat is particularly important, despite the fact that we don't actually take a class that really uses it, and you'll see why. As for your skill proficiencies, take whatever you like. I quite liked using Insight and Intimidation here. Made sense, so I went with that. Alright, let's move on. Next up, we're going to be a fighter level 2, and this is going to give us a really important thing for martial combatants, Action Surge, you know it, you love it, gives you an extra action to use this turn once per short rest. Yes, short rest. So, no reason, like, there's nothing bad here, you just get more health and Action Surge, which is awesome, always great. A lot of people take two level fighter dips in fighter just for this, and there's no reason not to have it here. Perfectly good thing to have. Next, we're at Fighter Level 3, and to the surprise of no one, we are taking the subclass Eldritch Knight. Uh, this is going to give us spell slots, spell casting, all that scale with intelligence, that's why it's so high. It's a really, really good spell to mix with... It, a really good spell, a really good subclass to mix with full casters, which we will be doing. As a bonus, as our racial, as part of being a Kifiantiki, our racial ability jump comes in, which means we get enhanced leap for free once per long rest to triple our jumping distance for 10 turns. Really, really good. Next, you get to choose your cantrips. If you want to, if you want to psychically invade the minds of your enemies and swerve them into your favor, you got to take friends. This is my go-to cantrip for every build in this game because it is just that good. Uh, your second uh, cantrip can be whatever you like. Mage Hand is appropriate here, and honestly, I will be taking it. Even though, as a Gif Yankee, we do get a version of Mage Hand that we can cast as a racial bonus for free. It's only once per long rest, and while the Mage Hand in this game has been nerfed to only be usable once per short rest, uh, this does mean you get two uses of it. In fact, even it gives you about 
three uses of it per long rest, so I'd say that's pretty good. As for your spells, you can really take whatever you like here. I personally like shield because of the idea of being able to quickly create a psychic force field uh, to defend yourself from attacks is pretty dang cool. And you can either take chromatic orb for an orb of thunder damage, magic missile for force damage, or thunder wave for a big psych psionic blast, which is what I'm going to be taking here because I feel like it is the most thematic personally, but these options aren't exactly criminal choices. As for your expanded spell slot, you can take whatever you like here, it really doesn't matter. If you want to be able to gently glide using your psychic abilities, you use Featherfall. If you want to be able to run faster, you can, using your psionic abilities to augment your movement, you can use Longstrider. Uh, if you want more uses of Enhanced Sleep per day, you can use enhanced, you can get Enhanced Sleep here, which does work as a ritual. Uh, disguise Self as a little illusion spell, could be nice. You can take Tasha's Hideous Laughter for uh, being able to psychically invade your enemy's minds and cause them to burst out in a fit of laughter. We're going to be getting most of these kind of spells, like for example Sleep and uh, Hideous Laughter, as we level up anyway, so you don't feel the need to take these here. So I think, personally, I would take Lo uh, Longstrider or Featherfall. It's really up to personal preference. If you feel like you're going to be lacking in mobility, which we won't be, towards the end, but it is going to take a little while to get there, you might want to take this, but I find unless you're st stacking Long Strider with other movement buffs, it doesn't really make a huge difference right off the bat. Uh, Featherfall is always a nice spell to have, but we'll have an other ways of getting it later, so it feels like a bit of a waste of a spell slot here. So I'm actually going to take Chromatic Orb. Uh, this early in the game, you are lacking uh, ranged offensive options that are thematic with the theme, so being able to do a big Orb of Thunder damage is really, really nice as a bit of a psionic orb. I think it's quite cool, uh, but feel free to take anything else if you think it's more thematic, but I quite like having the extra damage option here. Alright, we are at Fighter level 4, and we are not going to be taking it. We are going to be jumping straight over to Wizard. I mean, I felt like this was fairly an, an, a fairly obvious choice, but um, unfortunately we don't get to take our feet here because we need to get into Wizard as soon as we can. And this is basically, if we don't take Wizard here, we're not going to get everything we want because we are taking Wizard all the way to max level. So, as a Wizard, we are going to get three cantrips. It doesn't really matter what you take here. I like Minor Illusion for influencing your enemy's mind to see if something is to see something that isn't actually there. Uh, you could take Blade Ward here, and if you want to, that's not a bad idea, but we are going to be getting Blade Ward for free later, so I don't recommend it here. But if you want to throw up a little bit of a Psychic Aura, this could work. Uh, basically, take whatever you like. I'm just going to take Ray of Frost and Shocking Grasp, just as some extra damage options in the form of cantrips. Not really fitting the theme, unfortunately, but not many things do. Um, so yeah, we're going to move on from that. We now get to choose six spells, and this is kind of fun. So, we can get our Long Striders, our Feather Falls, our Expeditious Retreats, our Enhanced Leaps, but we also get our Psychic Spells. So I'm going to say take Tasha's Hideous Laughter, Sleep. Uh, you could take Charm Person here, but I find that you have better combat options, so I would just stick with friends, don't take this here. You could take Magic Missile, I will here just because it's Force Damage, so you can kind of say it's like a Psionic like, blast that works at range, and, like, you're manipulating its path of travel with your mind so it can always hit your opponent. I think it works out pretty well, and it is a nice damage option that will always scale up, so I think it's good to have here. Uh, your last option can be whatever you feel is appropriate. Uh, you could, if you're not in, if you don't have a good set of armor yet, you could take mage armor, but I don't personally recommend it, because heavy armor is very easy to come by early in the end of games, especially since, um, and our fighter will start with medium armor, which is going to be better anyway. So, do whatever you like here. I think I'm personally going to take, um... Uh, I'll take Charm Person now because it's in theme and it's not like you can't really swap spells around as a wizard anyway. And in fact, that's the beauty of wizard. Uh, you can basically always get scrolls for spells you want if you just know where to look. So you're going to be getting a ton of spells with this build, which is really, really awesome. Wizards are really underrated in this game. And I think the game's actually picked a pretty decent default sprint here. I am going to replace Longstrider with Magic, Magic Missile, because again, I don't think it's that crazy just on its own. But I do like this little selection of mind-altering spells we have here, plus our Psionic Blasts. Pretty good. Next up, we're at Wizard level 2, and we get to pick our subclass. Now, this is something I actually uh, kind of deliberated back and forth on for quite a bit. Obviously, my initial instinct was to go straight for either the enhance, Enchantment or Illusion Schools. 
enchantment giving us the ability to cast like a class action version of like things like hypnotic pattern or, or like spells that let us charm and frighten which is on theme but we already get so much of that in our actual spells that it felt a little bit redundant at the end of the day and then the illusion school just doesn't really give us anything that interesting it lets us make an illusion a cast minor illusion as a bonus section for free or blah 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 gives us the invisibility it's not really that important so here's the subclass I actually end up going with. I went with Divination. Because the idea that you're so psionically powerful that you can see the future and use it to change the present is so goddamn cool. Because if you don't know what Divination does, you basically get these things called Portent. Portent Die. Uh, after each long rest, you gain two random portent die. During the day, you can use your reaction to change the die of any attack roll or saving throw rolled near you to one of your portent die. So, say at the start of the day, you roll your portent die and you roll a 9 or a 5. If your enemy rolls a saving throw against one of your, say, Tasha's Hideous Laughter, and they succeed the roll, you can change the successful roll to a 5, causing them to fail. And by the time we get to our final levels in this build, you'll be able to do this three different times per long rest. This is really, really cool. I mean, also you can use it to make you or your allies' attack rolls succeed. You can use it to help your, your, your allies' saving throws. It is so, so cool. And the idea that you can, like, use your psychic powers to read the future. It literally says your dreams got you glimpses into the future. I can see the future! It's so surprisingly thematic, really powerful, and just genuinely fun. I really, really enjoyed using this ability when I when I tested this build's power. Uh, that, honestly, this might be my go-to wizard class from now on, regardless of what I build. This is so, so fun. Oh, and as a bonus, we get Misty Step. Uh, once per long rest as a racial bonus. I mean, again, it's once per long rest, which isn't great, but so if you wanted to take Misty Step as one of your spells, you could. In fact, I probably will. Uh, but the fact that we get it for free here, regardless, before you know, you know what it would, is actually pretty nice. As for your spells, we're still stuck on the level one spells here, so there's not too much good stuff to use yet. Just taking start enhanced sleep if you want to be on theme and grab one other thing. I mean, you could do fog, fog cloud, but not really on theme. Find Familiar is always a useful spell, just have a little pet that follows you in fact. In fact, you know what? I'm going to take Find Familiar because I want a pet cat. No other reason. <laughs> uh, and I think I'll take my pet cat. <laughs> Having pets in D&D is always fun. It's a shame Beastmaster kind of sucks. Anyways, uh, we're on to wizard level 3 now, which means we're going to be getting an improved level 2 spell slot, and we're going to get a couple of more spells, and this is where we start getting to level 2, this is where the good stuff rolls in. So, you've got a lot of options here, and you will have the ability to take them in kind of any order you wish, so let's go over the kind of options that you will have that are in theme. Number 1, Detect Thoughts. Psychically reading people's minds, it's Psychic Power 101, I would personally take this because it is so on theme. A uh, crown of madness, in inducing madness in your enemy through, you know, your psychic powers, muddling their mind. Really, really cool. Blindness, psychically tricking your enemy's mind into thinking it cannot see, stopping the signals of, you know, your eyes, the eye sending signals to the brain. Really, really cool. Hold person, psychically freezing someone in place by controlling their muscle movements through brain patterns. Really, really cool. Uh, misty step, you can take this here if you want those extra misty step slots to be able to quickly transport yourself around the map. Normally I wouldn't say this like teleporting is usually in the psychic prerogative, but DD and the GIF Yankee and even the Mind Flayers seem to think so, so yeah, obviously you can take this here. Phantasmal Force to invade your enemy's mind to either deal psychic damage or continue to make them think you're continuing to attack them with the last damage type you did. Very, very cool. See invisibility to psychically sense where your enemies are no matter what. Shatter to do a massive psychic explosion on an enemy. The possibilities are endless, and like I say, by the time you finish this build, even even if you don't really get to take all the spells at once, you can mix and match them based on the situation, and just go crazy. These abilities are so damn cool. I think we've got enough ways to kind of immobilize our enemies at the moment, so I am going to take Shatter to start, but we will be getting all of this good stuff by the time we've maxed out our build. So, yep. Sorry, kitty, you gotta go. We need to power build. Next up at Wizard Level 4, we are going to be getting our first feat in addition to Level 3 spell slots, which is awesome. You get an extra cantrip here, which is 
Eh, we're kind of running out of options that are on theme, so just pick whatever you like. If you want a solid range option, pick Firebolt. That's what I'm going to take. It's not on theme, but hey, it's nice to have. Uh, we get two more level 2 spells. In this case, I am going to be taking uh, Hold Person and Phantasmal Killer, or Phantasmal Force. I really like these spells thematically, invading your enemy's mind to trick them into thinking they're taking damage. Hold Person to stop an enemy's movement. It's awesome. Definitely going to be rocking these bad boys. And of course, we get our feet here. We're going to be taking ability score improvement, buffing our intelligence to 19, and then using RTF or Spoon to take it that extra step up to 20. Yes, having our main spell spellcasting modifier only maxed out at level 7 is a little bit slower than my other builds, but trust me, it is worth it for the end result. So take that intelligence up to 19 and p bump it up to a 20. Next up with Wizard level 5, we are looking at a upgraded spell slot, we're getting another level 3, and also we're now into level 3 spells. This is the kicker, again it gets even crazier here, uh, but I am just going to preface something right off the bat, we are not taking haste. We don't take haste, we just don't, uh, it's not on theme and there's more things we want that are. Doesn't mean we're not going to be getting haste, but we're not taking it here. So. We immediately get access to two really awesome psychic abilities, Fear, which causes uh, enemies to drop whatever they're carrying and become fearful, they will be easier to hit, it's such a good spell to, for influencing your enemy's mind into, and just scare the living crap out of them. It's awesome, I love it. Also Hypnotic Pattern, hypnotize creatures that can see the pattern, they cannot attack you and they cannot move or act. Different flavour of the same ice cream, I guess. What the fuck was that expression? Uh, but it kind of does a similar thing, but it's a pick and choose kind of scenario if, um, you know, you want to mess around with your enemies in different ways. Uh, so, I mean, Fear and Timonic Pattern kind of accomplish the same thing. So if you wanted to go for something else to kind of diversify, you know, your cool of magic, you can. Uh, but I'm going to take both here because I quite like the idea of having both. But you could take Blindness, you could take Crown of Madness. Again, and you can mix and match, you could take Sea Invisibility. So many cool things you can do. Yep, and yep, we're going to put these two on, and we're moving on. Next up at Wizard Level 6, we are going to be getting even more good stuff. We're going to be getting our first Level 4 spell slot. Nice. And we're going to be getting our subclass feature, Expert Divination. You gain an additional portent die. When taking a short rest, you receive a prophecy. Complete it to regain a missing portent die. So... You get three important dice, and if you complete a special little side quest that is unique to this subclass, you get another one. That is so cool from a gameplay perspective. Such a unique idea. Bravo. This is a, this is just an amazing subclass. I love it. Spells. Uh, still sticking with level three stuff here, but again, you can take whatever you want. Uh, slow, which I actually didn't consider, but being able to kind of like make a psychic field that's almost like anti-gravity to like slow down your enemy's movement is actually kind of cool, but maybe not quite on theme. I am stretching a little bit here. I'm going to just take a couple of really easy psychic spells to work with. I'm going to take uh, Blindness, and I'm also going to take Misty Step because they are both quite useful. Being able to blind an enemy spellcaster that's just giving you a ton of trouble would be really, really cool. So yeah, we can go with that, and I will pop Misty Step on there. To get one free usage of Misty Snap, and then you know be able to cast using spell slots after that. Pretty neat. Uh, next up, another level four spell slot. Just what the doctor ordered, and now we get to get into level four spells, which are even more awesome. Uh, you're going to get a few options here. First up is Confusion. Befuddle a group of enemies, causing them to attack at random, wander around aimlessly, and occasionally skip turns in their stupor. Basically, make your enemies fight each other, do nothing at all, or maybe even walk close to a cliff so you can shove them off. And this affects multiple enemies within a radius, so this is actually going to be one of your most powerful options in this build for dealing with big groups. Super, super fun spell. One of my favorites to try out. It was really, really cool. Next up, we're going to be taking Phantasmal Killer. It's a weird spell. Haunt a creature with illusions of their greatest fears. It takes 4d10 psychic damage per turn, can no longer move, and will be easier to hit. It's basically a more powerful version of kind of like fear, I guess. So you could kind of replace fear with this in the long run and kind of get more out of it. Uh, next up... And then, yeah, I mean, there's other, there's other options here, which I'll go over quick. Oraluke's Resilient Sphere. Basically, give yourself a really dense Psychic Force field um, that you can either cast on yourself to block 
all incoming damage or cost on an enemy to stop them from being able to deal damage. Really, really cool. There is a dog barking outside my window. That's annoying. Uh... Uh, you can also go back into the lower levels for Crown of Madness or something like that. Uh, there's a bunch of other diction options here. I mean, I know the, like we're kind of leaving Counter Spell behind here, but I will be discussing something later that I don't normally discuss in my builds that will kind of replace Counter Spell in a way, so I'm not taking it here. Prepared Spells. Uh, let's take Phantasmal Killer, and I'll probably be replacing Fear at this point, because Phantasmal Killer, in my opinion, is kind of a Better? Oh no, I guess hmm, fear affects a group though. Hmm. I think at this point you could probably ditch sleep. I don't think it's going to be that useful. And pot confusion. You kind of will transfer out your lower level spells to kind of make... To kind of use your higher spells. Because because the lower level spells that target single enemies are going to be as useful in the later game. So, but play around with it and see whatever you're comfortable with. Next up at wizard level 8, we are going to be getting a bunch of cool stuff here. Obviously level 4 and level 5 spell slots are now unlocked. Uh, you are still on level 4 spells, so again you can kind of take whatever you like here. I do quite like Autoloop's Resilient Sphere. I think it does have a lot of niche uses, especially against some boss fights. So I will be taking it here because I quite like it thematically as well. I'm also going to be taking Sea Invisibility for that psychically sensitive enemy shtick that I was on about earlier. I do quite like that as a flavor. And then we're going to get a feat. Now, Bear with me on this, because we're getting this really late, but it's super, super important. You're going to be taking Magic Initiate Bard. This is going to get you two cantrips, one being Vicious Mockery, a free bit of ranged psychic damage that imposes disadvantage and also is just a ton of fun to use. Definitely worth picking up here. Uh, your second Bard thingy can be whatever you want, it really doesn't matter. Take the Light Cantrip. I have no reason for this. It's the light cantrip. You might find a use for it. Uh, and then you get a free bard spell, and we're going to be taking Dissonant Whispers. This is a level 1 spell that does 3d6 flanking damage and has a chance to frighten a creature that, for some stupid reason, can only be used once per long rest. I don't know why. It's not that strong. Maybe it's a bit strong in the early game, because... I mean, but the damage doesn't scale. I don't believe. I'm not sure don't quote me on that and the frightening a creature is not guaranteed i don't believe it's just mm, i don't know why it's long rest i and it feels a bit dumb to kind of take um a whole feat just for this but it is a nice little bit of extra psychic damage we can do being able to manipulate your enemy's mind in a way that causes them to be damaged uh but we're mainly here for vicious mockery and you will see why let's keep going and finally, at max level, we are a wizard level 9, which is going to get us our final 5th level spell slot. Unfortunately, because we did not take enough levels in a full cast, we don't get 6th level spells. But that's okay, because there aren't any 6th level spells that are really on theme anyway. But here we're going to get our 5th level spells, and there's a couple that I really want. Telekinesis. Like, it's the go-to psychic ability. It is so so cool and this spell is broken like you think shoving in this game is really powerful wait till you are able to just throw enemies off a cliff at range from like wherever and the range on technically is like is insane you throw these things far like really far absolutely awesome spell you're gonna want to use this one quite a lot uh, and then next up, you've got a few cool options. Like I say, you can go back into the lower levels if there's anything you haven't taken that you want to. But you get things like Dominate Person, where you just get to psychically override a creature's mind and just make them fight for you. Brainwashing, awesome psychic ability. Hold Monster, you get to paralyze pretty much any creature. And you always get critical hits on them. Basically, an upgraded version of Hold Person. Really, really cool spell. Uh, we're going to be taking this here. Now, obviously, Dominate Person is something that we will or would want to get, but we actually get it a different way for free. So, I would take Hold Purse, or Hold Monster, and Telekinesis here. And I'm just going to go ahead and slap these both on my build because they are awesome. And I believe with that, we are done leveling. 
So, allow me to address some things off the bat. We were going for a melee fighter here mixed in with our psionic abilities, but we never got extra attack. Why? As nice as it would be to have, we don't actually need it. Because we get it in a different way, and in a way that is unique to this build. But let's go over a few extra things that I didn't actually touch on in the uh, leveling section. For being a Gif Yankee, like I said, we got our racial ability to jump, cast Mage Hand, and Misty Step. But we also get Astral Knowledge, using our psychic abilities to touch into knowledge from our ancestors or from other places, to be able to gain proficiency in all skills of a certain ability until a long rest. Really, really cool. Also, as an Eldritch Knight Fighter, we get to ritually bind the weapon in our main hand. The weapon cannot be knocked out of your hand and automatically returns to you when thrown. So, you can bind your weapon, throw it, and then use the force to pull it back to you, Jedi style. Awesome, awesome ability that is really on point. Arcane Recovery, replenish spell slots while out of combat. We've taken enough levels of wizard that we can replenish one spell slot of any level or multiple ones of lower levels. Super, super cool. And we get everything we discussed spell-wise. Nothing too much to add on to there. Until we get into the equipment. And this is where the build goes from being really, really cool to just over-the-moon awesome. Like, seriously, Dexaray suggesting this build has just... Oh, it makes me so happy. So, let's get started on the main ticket item here. I want to jump straight into this because finding this item made me so excited. This is the Band of the Mystic Scoundrel. Illusion Quickening is its ability. It's a ring, so we usually kind of open about our ring slots anyway, so it's nice to have something that is so unique and powerful in this build. After hitting a creature with a weapon attack, which we will be doing, you can cast an Illusion or Enchantment spells, which is basically most of our entire kit, as a bonus action. Holy cow, basically, we're not really using our bonus action for very many things outside of Misty Step anyway, so being able to use a regular attack and then bonus attack literally any of our psychic manipulation spells, um, with the few obvious exceptions being things like Magic Missile or Chromatic Orb, Thunder Wave, Telekinesis, unfortunately it's Transmutation, which really sucks because I really would have liked to have cast this as a bonus action, but we get Phantasmal Killer, whole person. Any of this sort of stuff, we get to cast, like, immediately. And this is why Vicious Mockery was important. Because basically this adds as our regular kind of extra attack. Because the biggest weakness of this build is that most of our spells are concentration. In fact, all of them are. I'm pretty sure, with the exception of our ranged defensive spells. So you will be sw switching and swapping between various spell effects as you go. So if you want to just be able to have a single spell effect on the go, for example, perhaps Confusion, you could attack and then use what is your extra attack, in quotations, to cast Vicious Mockery or Dissonant, Whis Dissonant Whispers once per long rest, but mainly Vicious Mockery to get that extra bit of damage in. Super, super cool, unique little interaction that comes out of this build that I absolutely love. And you may think, oh, that can't be as effective as just attacking twice. Well, yeah, you're right. Uh, but... Our single strikes that we're going to be doing are going to be super, super powerful anyway because of our choice of weapons, or, yeah, weapons. Uh, and so the extra Vicious Mockery is just a nice bit of bonus damage when we get it, and is also going to impose disadvantage on anything we're facing, so it is overall trading a bit of power for a lot more utility. It's It blows my mind how versatile this build is and how much fun it actually is in practice. But let's get on to the rest of the equipment. Starting off, I'll get the obvious out of the way, the Amulet of Great Health. I actually, in my original version of this build, I didn't use this, which I was super, super proud of. Uh, but then I realized this build is extremely multi-ability score dependent, um, and I had to put it in. Sorry. Uh, I, uh, sorry if this disappoints anybody, uh, but in case you are wondering, if you want to kind of take some points out of Charisma to pop into your constitution instead, you can actually wear this, the Spell Crux Amulet, which actually gives you spell slot restoration. Once per long rest, you can restore any level spell slot for free. Pretty useful if you want those high level spells to be cast often, but overall in the long term, this is just way more useful. I hate to do it, but it's just how it is. Uh, we'll move on to our final ring as well, the Strange Conduit Ring. I used this in my Virgil build, and I think it just works even more appropriately here. While concentrating on a spell, the wearer's weapon attacks deal an additional 1d4 psychic damage. 
more psychic damage, and since we're always concentrating on a spell in some shape or variety, this is just nice to have. More, more damage. Uh, let's get on to the armor. Starting off, we have the Circlet of Psychonic Revenge. When you succeed a saving throw, which you're going to be able to do a lot with this build, the foe that caused the throw takes 1d4 psychic damage. Gif Yankee also gain a plus 1 bonus to Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma saving throws. Super nice buff overall, just for playing a Gif Yankee. Fits into the build because we get to do psychic damage as like a retaliation. Uh, it's not the most powerful thing. It was mainly just pretty good and on theme. But if you want to replace this with something more powerful, you're not really going to be losing much. However, I like this because I think it fits the theme of the character and the build extremely well. Next up, the Nymph Cloak. For free, we get Dominate Person once per long rest. This is how we get it for free. And I find that in practice, you're probably not going to want to cast Dominate Person too often anyway, because you want to be saving your fifth level spell slots for something that has a wider range of utility. So being able to cast Dominate Person for free, just for wearing a cloak, is really, really nice. Our armor is the armor of persistence, magical plate, all incoming damage is reduced by two. You get resistant and blade resistance and blade ward constantly for free, and it's heavy armor, which we have proficiency in, so we don't need to level our dexterity. This is basically just setting our AC to 20 for free. Awesome stuff. For gauntlets of frost giant strength. Strength saving flows plus one and sets the wearer's strength to 23. This is how we get over needing to be multi-ability score dependent by just setting our dex to 10 and pumping it into strength. Now, the reason I set my dex to 10 is the same reason I set my constitution to 10 when building with the amulet of greater health. Baldur's Gate 3 is weird. That is if you have an 8 in the score, so you're taking a negative 1 penalty. But negative 1 penalty is applied before the bonuses from having uh, ability score increases from items are applied. So you would basically be taking a... Um, a plus five because you would be taking a negative one and then a plus six so you get a total of plus five so in order to be at maximum power put a couple of points into con and strength makes sense uh also it kind of goes nice with the armor set anyway and lastly this is another cool unique thematic thing is the boot psionic movement uh when a gif yankee casts fly their next melee weapon attack deals an extra 1d4 psychic damage uh, you get a, bit, a, a bonus to deck saving throws, and you also get to cast Fly once per long rest. There is your psionic flight in one armor piece. Also, I didn't actually say it at the time, but the fact that you get resistance blade ward and all incoming damage resisted by two on the armor piece is, be is basically just a nice way of saying you have this constant psychic aura that constantly uh, shields you from damage. Really, really sick. I think this whole build comes together nicely, and it's kind of on theme. When you color it a certain way, it looks like if Yankee armor. This is using the Harlequin black and white dye on all armor pieces, and I just think it looks so, so cool and on theme. But here is the big one. The sword, the silver sword of the astral plane. Uh, this does 2d6 plus 9 slashing damage because of our stats. It is a Gif-born psionic weapon. When wielded by a Gif Yankee, this weapon deals an extra 1d6 of psychic damage. I believe that's the same as the Raffle Smite spell, which I believe is the only spell in the game that does psychic damage that we did not get, and I was not willing to take your love as a pal paladin for it. Uh, however, we still get Raffle Smite. Just wait a minute. Uh, Gift-born psionic resistance. A Gift Yankee holding this weapon has advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws, resistance to psychic damage, and cannot be charmed. Plus, it's a legendary plus three weapon. Holy shit. It's crazy to me, right, that Gift Yankee are the least popular race in this game. Yes, they are buttfuck ugly. Uh, sorry, Gift fans, but this is a general consensus. If they just had noses, they would be fine. The stats, the theme, the build, the psychic stuff, it's too powerful to ignore. This thing is insane. And it's not even technically done, because if we go down here, you get a unique attack called the Soul Breaker. Rend the enemy's body and soul and possibly stun them. One, this is basically Raffle Smite, but more powerful. You get a 1d6 plus 4 psychic damage. You stun them for two turns. And I don't think... This takes into account the d6 of damage that you already get if you're a Githyanki. So I think this is actually 2d6 plus 4 psychic damage when using this attack. Like, what? This is insanely powerful. All this in one blade, and the only condition is you have to play as this guy. Which I actually think doesn't look too bad. I think I did well with this face. Anyways, uh, AC of 20, as we went over before. 
and also our ranged weapon because we can just have one on there for free even if we don't necessarily use it but there's no reason not to in this build if you if you need ranged damage we get the dark fire short bow plus two damage um grass resistance to fire and cold damage for free and you get to cast haste once per long rest i used i had this on the virtual build as well just because we had an empty slot to fill and this thing just does so many different things for you that you might as well use it uh, obviously, you, if you cast haste, you'd be at a massive disadvantage if you tried to cast anything else. But if you cast haste, then you get to throw your um, ranged attacks out way more, throw in your uh, melee attacks as well. So basically, this build has two most modes. The haste mode, where you're focusing more on offense and just pure damage, and the psychic manipulation mode, where you are going to be focusing on battlefield control and psychic damage. Really... You, again, so it's just more versatility that this build gets, but I'm not done yet because there is kind of another alternate mode to this build, and that is the sword and shield mode. Here we have Voss's silver sword. Uh, it's a pretty standard long sword. Uh, it's a plus two enchantment. Uh, it does get a bonus psychic damage, but only against certain enemies, but it also gets that to attack rolls, which is quite unique. Uh, so it works against Githyanki, Aberrations, Fiends, and Elementals. I it's not going to come up that often, but a lot of the stronger enemies in the game actually can fall into the Aberration or Fiend kind of category. So it is kind of worth having on if you want to use this bad boy. Viconia's Walking Fortress. This is a legendary shield. It gives you a plus three to your armor class, so a total armor class of 23. It gives you Rebuke of the Mighty. When a foe hits you with a melee attack, you can use Reaction, dealing 2 to 8 force damage, and knock it prone unless they succeed a deck saving throw. I think this is fairly standard for most shields to get like the shield bash ability. This is just a little bit more of a powerful version of that. Uh, spell guard. You gain advantage on saving throws against spells. Neat. Spell attack rolls against you have disadvantage. Also neat. But here's some cool stuff. Uh, I'll go over this one first. You get warding bond. Ward an ally. Then gain resistance to all damage. Cool. And take a plus one damage to their armor class on saving throws. Also cool. Uh, plus one bonus, sorry, not plus one damage. Uh, each time the ally takes damage, you take the same amount of damage. So if you wanted to tank for an ally with your, you know, super powerful, super high hit point pool, you can. But here's the other cool thing. Reflective shell. A protective shell envelops you. It reflects any projectiles targeted, you, targeted at you back to the point of origin. Cost a bonus action, lasts for two turns per short rest. This is another version of the Psychic Shield, which will actually reflect projectiles. And according to the Baldur's Gate 3 wiki, this includes arrows, bolts, a magic, magic missile, and any spell that requires an attack roll. Uh, so things like Firebolt, uh, Rare Frost, I believe, works. Um, like Fireball, I think, works. Like, play around with it, see what you get. Uh, but yeah, so if you want to be a more offensive attacker, go with the Silver Sword of the Astral Plane, which I think I would normally go with. But if there's a situation where you think this shield could be super, super useful, then you get to go for a defensive shield playstyle. So again, more versatility to this build, and it's all on theme. I only wish I could somehow use this with this and just become unstoppable. Uh, there is one... There's actually two things, but the first thing is there is one spell that we did not get that actually does psychic damage. That is Shadow Blade. I put, brought this away, ring here just so I could show you. Uh, Shadow Blade, weave a shadowy short sword in your hand that deals 2 to, two to 16 psychic damage. Um, obviously not as powerful as an uh, as an option. Uh, I'm loving it. Uh, apologies. Um, obviously Shadow Blade is not as powerful as either of our weapon attacks, but if you these weapons are both acquired in Act 3 of the game, so Shadow Blade can actually be a really, really nice substitute until you can get a hold of your higher level weapons. Um, although I have just lied to you. Um, you can get this weapon, and if you're in the know, you're in the know, and I think a lot of people do know this now, but I will just say in case you don't. You can get this thing as soon as you start Act 1. This weapon. You can get it as early as Act 1 by... Uh, you will run, And this is a mild spoiler for Act 1, but not really... Uh, when you reach the Gif Yankee Patrol past Joaquin's Rest in Act 1, you can cast Command Drop using Shadow Heart, for example, because she has it in her prepared spell list. 
for a 9% chance to make Kifrak Voss, one of the leading people there, to drop this weapon. It's a 9% chance, so quick save beforehand and reset until you get it. Then, you just have to be able to sneak in somehow or defeat the Kifyanki Patrol in order to get this weapon for free. I don't know if this has any lasting consequences on the actual narrative. I don't believe so. If you follow the give like the Lazel questline to its redemption arc, you should be able to continue that questline no problem, even if you do this. It just makes that initial Kifyanki party hostile to you. But then you just get a free weapon. Like, and you get all of this in Act 1. You will be unstoppable as a Kifyanki wielding this weapon in Act 1. When I did my Dark Urge playthrough, um, which was a personal playthrough of mine, I used this, like, on my evil run, and it carried me until I got, like, I think it was Baldurin's Giant Slayer towards the end. Like, this is a stellar weapon, and you can get it in Act 1. But if you do want Shadowblade, obviously, you can equip this ring. However, there is a small side quest you can do in Act 2, which gets you Shadowblade permanently added to your spell list, usable once per long rest, for no cost. Uh, it's called Arabella's Shadow Blade, so if you meet the NPC Arabella, make sure you follow her questline if you want to get the final psychic spell. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the build. Um, super, super, super strong, super fun, comes online really, really quickly, and it's just awesome. It's a fun mix of martial prowess and psychic power. It does everything you could want. So, once again, a big shout out and thank you to Dexaray for suggesting this build. Uh, you specifically said in your comment that you wanted this optimized. I hope this is what you would consider optimized. Maybe it's, I hope it was what you were looking for. If it's not exactly what you were looking for, I apologize. But I feel like regardless, we've got something cool here. So, um, and the fact that you gave me a suggestion that was so awesome that it made me want to um, break my uh, week-long break of making videos. Uh, shame on you. Not shame on you. You're awesome. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this being my first request build, I'm really, really happy uh, with how it turned out. Um, I don't think I've missed anything. Have I? Oh, wait. I did miss something, and I feel pretty damn stupid. Uh, <laughs> this is what happens when you record all in one take. There is something that I have obviously neglected to mention and neglected to test, because I'm not sure how I'd be able to quickly test this. And uh, I will say, spoiler warning here, I mean, this stuff kind of comes on in Act 1 anyway, but the stuff I'm going to talk about doesn't sort of happen until Act 3. And if you know, you know again, uh, but especially if you play through the game at least once, Let's talk Illithid Powers. Now, I don't normally include Illithid Powers in my builds because it is a character choice, and if people like to ro who like to roleplay, like myself, don't want to take the Illithid Powers in the run, I don't want to force them to do so. Um, I have done runs, such as my Dante run, where I didn't take them, and I felt like it was thematic for the character and really, really fun to kind of think without those overpowered abilities. But obviously, with a character like this you're missing out on a lot of really cool psychic powers that are super on theme if you don't. So you get things like Psionic Backlash, which essentially acts as, acts as a free counter spell. Uh, you get things like the Displacer Beast shape, which not really on theme for this build, but I did use it in my solo V build that I put in the description of the V build. Uh, you just get a bunch of cool psionic powers, just basic attacks, uh, black holes, Expertise on Deception, Persuasion, and uh, Intimidation checks. Uh, various, various different things uh, that I will leave to you guys to explore. Uh, this build works really, really well even without the Psionic Powers, but if you use the Psionic Powers, you just, uh, the Illithid Powers even, you are just going to take this build to the next level. Absolutely. Right. I'm done for real now. Thank you again for the request, and goodbye.